Introducing the Waterfront Inn, West Stockwith. Hi, I'm Stuart from the Waterfront Inn in West Stockwith. Um, this is our lovely pub, this is my lovely partner, and uh, we're quite happy to welcome motorhomes and camper fans on our car park, and I hope to see you soon. The Waterfront Inn was originally called the Crown Inn, and it took four years to build in the 1800s. Now a beautiful water view restaurant and bar, it's a perfect place to come to for a wonderful day out. The restaurant is light and airy, a wonderful place for an afternoon tea. The bar area has been recently decorated and feels so warm, lovely and cosy. A great place to sit and have a refreshing drink. It's even got a pool table and a pool league and not forgetting darts too, which they often play on certain nights of the week. And they must be good because they've even won trophies for it. After seeing what's on offer at the bar and looking out the window at that gorgeous view, it's time for me to take a pew and try some of the real ales. Hey everyone, um, I just want to let you know that I've had some sad news that unfortunately the footage that I had from the Waterfront Inn of me tasting beers and facing you eating my amazing dinner is not able, I'm not able to use it for some strange reason. So I'm going to try and do my best to try and make up for it with some commentary with the photos of me tasting and with the amazing Doom Bar. So I tried the Doom Bar from Sharps at 4%. Uh, this is 4.3%. It's an amber ale. And um, we're going to give this one a taste. Let's give it a go. You can see me in the pictures below of me trying them. I managed to get some screenshots, but they was, that unfortunately it just wouldn't play. So and what I've got here, um, we started brewing in rock in 1994 with an ambition to brew exceptional beer for the enjoyment of all and we remain committed to this philosophy at the pub it was four percent for a pint and at three pound ten alongside the castle rock harvest pale at three pound ten as well doom bar <laughs> okay let's have a look at it so it's definitely a golden amber color. It's very much like the um, Jurassic Park where you see the mosquito right at the beginning. Perfect amber. Let's give it a smell. It's very sweet. It's very sweet smelling. Hmm. What am I getting here? There's a slight bitterness to it. I think um, it's kind of like, I'm just trying to put my finger on it. It's kind of like, it's like a fruit cake, but without the, the, without the sweetness. So you know when you've got like the raisins and sultanas and things like that, that you would get in one of those like snack to goes they're like a little tiny bag you put in your pocket and off you go. That's what I'm getting I'm getting for it. Let's have a look. Um, so it's a spicy, spicy re resinous hop, sweet roasted malts. Uh, taste, there you go. Succulent dried fruit, lightly roasted malt. The finish is subtle, a subtle bitterness. Yeah, 
I get a bit of an aftertaste of just a slight bitter, only on the side of my tongue, nothing major. I like this one. Um, I wouldn't drink a lot of it. I think it would probably be, be really, really great with, I'm just thinking what food it would go with. I would probably eat this with a, eat this? I would probably drink this with a pie, something, something with meat, meat and gravy I would probably have this with. I'm a gravy girl, I love gravy. Just want to add that I actually, I, what I like about this drink is that uh, a lot of drinks are very thin. You know, you kind of, you put them in your mouth, you swallow them and it's, it's kind of gone. Whereas this one's got a bit of body. It's not like, not talking about creamy Guinness style body, but it's just that I can feel something going into my mouth. See, I can feel it going down into my mouth, which is something that I think, you know, when you're, when you're drinking an ale, I want to be able to feel it. I want to be able to swirl it around my mouth. I want it to feel it hit the back of my tongue. And this one, it does do that. Not as much as what a few others that I've had. I like it, it's nice. Unfortunately, I'm not able to try the Castle Rock, the Harvest Pale. Um, but from what I remember, it was, a, it was a pale ale. It was very mild. It was nice. It was um, very refreshing. And um, it's just unfortunate that uh, these, things, these things do happen. But hopefully this will make up for it. With such a welcoming place, I've got to have a look round of where I'm going to sit tonight. And of course, you know me, folks, I'm a sucker for a fire. There it is. Look at it. Mm, I can't wait for that to be on tonight. Don't worry, folks. I know I normally show you a menu, but there is a new food menu coming and they're going to be specialising in game food. Just delicious. I'm at the Waterfront Inn at West Stockwith, just about to get some food. I've got a cottage pie that's on its way very, very soon, and I'm really, really hungry. I'm really excited to try the food and then get to try the local ales. Okay, the food has just arrived. I've got cottage pie. The lovely lady's bringing it over now. Thank you very much. Oh, look at that. It's it's hot. So okay, be careful. thank you. Oh, and an extra pot of gravy. Landlord knows me well. In fact, knows me that well. He's even made it for me himself. I'm gonna try this. Don't even know where to start. Look at that. Marvin's woken up now. She just can smell it. Mm. Oh my gosh, that's yummy. It's like, it's like your proper, I don't know if it's the landlord or landlady who's made it. I'm hoping it's the landlady because I can refer to the fact that, you know, when you go back to your mum's and you have your cottage pie, with that gravy sauce and the veggies, it's just like that. Perfectly homely. And it didn't take me long till I scoffed the whole plate. This time I had it all to myself. Marvin didn't even get a look in. The cottage pie was just so tasty. I even got a chance to see a pie being brought out and that looked just as good. I love the fact that they still have a pool table. There's not many places do these days. It was great to see people enjoying themselves, having a game, and of course, somebody scoring the black. With Marvin asleep, I thought I'd take my camera and do some footage around the pub in this kind of light. These all brand new, lovely light bulbs that give off that orange glow. And of course, the fantastic new ceiling light. Looks amazing. The landlord and landlady treated me to a waterfront crumble with cherries in it. Cool. Doesn't it look scrumptious? I'm just about to dig into a bit of the waterfront famous crumble. Tonight it's apple and cherry. I'm really excited. Look, oh, look at that. Are we ready? Are we ready for this? I'm gonna dip into it. Don't tell Marvin though. No. 
She's asleep at the minute, so she can't smell it. Mmm. Got a bit, bit. Put a bit of ice cream on there. Mm. I can see her eyes are open quick. At least start with it down before she wakes up. As the night went on and Marvin fell asleep, I realised it's getting late. It's time to get back to Hank, ready to start the day bright and early and have a look at the pub. I didn't realise this place had accommodation as well and I was lucky enough to have a look at one of the rooms down below. It just looked beautiful, loved all the decor, looked really nice, nice homely and cosy. Just what you want for a perfect venue. The beer garden outside is just humongous. And did you see what I saw in the corner? Yeah, folks, glamping pods and you can hire them for the night. Let's take a look inside. And don't they look fab? But you also get use of the facilities of the toilets and the shower block that's there that also motorhomers can use as well. As Marvin has now met the local four-legged residents, it's given me a bit of an idea to head out and start our daily walk. Just outside the pub is a pathway to get you down by the side of the canal. What a lovely walk it is. Beautiful sunny day, just perfect for Marvin and I to go and see what's going on around the local area. And you wouldn't believe it, we came across a donkey. A donkey. As Marvin led the way, we came across a lovely lock. There was loads of bridges and locks to go through. It was just wonderful. I think Marvin was having more fun than I. Marvin kept making new friends along the way, along this walk. It's such a popular route, but it's really nice because everybody seems really polite and friendly. This route was a real historical walk. So many old style bridges that you can walk under and I'm really glad that we got good weather for it too. We decided to take the footpath away from the side of the canal just to get a bit more open space. There was fields and there was this beautiful pathway that kind of took us underneath the trees like a little tunnel. But surprisingly enough, it brought us back to the canal. I think what we did was just took a shortcut to cut out the corner. We came to a bridge which took us up to the main road as we wanted to have a walk round the village itself just to see what sort of area that I was staying in. I think the sunlight really made this village sparkle as it really did look beautiful. As Marvin again made more friends, we carried on walking as we wanted to try and head back to the pub a different route. I looked at my map and it told me to go along the main road, but just be mindful folks, there is no path. As we found our way back to the water, it started turning a little bit grey, so we needed to put on our walking shoes, pick up the pace, just to try and get back to Hank before it rains. There's lots to see by the side of the water, whether it's barge boats, normal boats, 
or even passers-by. You've got power stations, people fishing. It was an absolute delight. And of course, Marvin made friends along the way. She was a lucky girl today. She's got many new friends. She must be that happy that she's got to have a jiggle on the floor. Come on, folks, I'm not that naive. We're coming to the end of our walk now, as we've come across the West Stockwith Sleuth Gate. There's a poster at the bottom so you can find out some of the history about it. Here we go, almost back to Hank. I just wanted to take one last look around me, at all the water, all the boats, all the wonderful elements of this fantastic place. What a find. If you get a chance to come here, this is the place you've got to visit. The walks are amazing, the people are fantastic. It's a home from home. And sometimes that's just what you want when living in a motorhome. As Marvin says goodbye to her new found friends, I reflect on how pleased I am to find this place. It's such a find, so relaxing, so wonderful, and it's got everything that you need here. Oh, and did I mention, Hank's made another friend. Please let me introduce to you, Casper. Looks like Marvin's ready to hit the road. Don't forget folks to subscribe to follow our adventures and also support your local and join camera. Thanks for watching.